friend, we are back with the Mystery Science Theater 3000 box set 19. Uh, quite an impressive uh, display here. This isn't some toy action transformer fun fill set. Uh, this is the DVD uh, box set with uh, the gypsy figurine inside. And let me just open that up right here. And actually, it's actually actually not that difficult to deal with. There's no obnoxious twist ties or anything like that. She is just conveniently placed in the package where you can take it out. Nothing. I love that. I'm so glad they did it that way. Now, uh, let's just take a look at the uh, Gypsy figurine first. Uh, it's very highly detailed. Um, she was originally put together with, uh, let's see, this tubing. And what, what, do you know what this is supposed to be, the, the base of um, well, do you know car that, seats. Uh, those car seats. And kids so, car kids seats. Kids car seats. That's hilarious. And of course, a flashlight has arrived. And it really does look like that. Uh, very nice. They didn't try to do anything uh, uh, stylized or anything like that. And the base looks just amazing. Uh, very rarely did you get to see the end of Gypsy's tube. Uh, but uh, there she goes. Woo! How are you doing? And she looks great with um, the others, too. I think uh, these are all fairly to scale, I think, uh, with each other. So now we have all three. Now all we have to do is what? Uh, Cambot? What's cool about Cambot is Cambot has several different forms throughout the uh, series, so they could do they could do a uh, KTMA Cambot, a Season 1 Cambot, a Season 2 Cambot, and uh, I think he changed the final form maybe like in Season 5 or something like that? Or 6? When Mike came along, I think they redesigned him into that ball that looked like, um, looked like the fant phantasm, uh, ball without the knives and stuff like that. Well, uh, let's get to the movies themselves, and here we go. This is the box set, and this is actually one of the best box sets I have ever seen from either Rhino or Shout Factory. It features Robot Monster, Bride of the Monster, yes, that's the Ed Wood film, Devil Doll, and Devil Fish. Now, I'm not sure if they... Uh, pick two monster movies and two devil movies. Uh, I think they did on, per uh, on purpose. I, I, I like the rhythm of that. And as usual, this movie has the Steve Vance uh, little posters that are made to look like uh, old movie posters. And we got uh, Devil Doll, Robot Monster, Bride of the Monster, and Devil Fish. And they're all excellently uh, illustrated and very funny, too. And they're all featured also on the covers of the uh, DVDs. And uh, we'll start off with Robot Monster. Robot Monster is, of course, maybe, uh, since it's a Season 1 episode, it's a little weaker because MST3K uh, was still kind of getting the gist of uh, how to accurately make fun of a movie all the way through. So, you know, there are some uh, missed opportunities here and there in this uh, episode. Uh, but the good thing is, it's such a goofy movie. I don't know if you've ever seen Robot Monster, but holy crap, it's a goofy film. You've probably seen images of it in the past. It's one of those kind of iconic, dumbass films. And boy, is it funny. It's And their lines are very funny. This is actually probably one of the best Rift episodes. I think Black Scorpion was really good uh, in season one, and so was this one. I think they were both very good. Uh, this feat has some good features. This has uh, introduction by J. Elvis Weinstein, where he gets to talk about uh, the making of the episode. And he hasn't had a chance to really talk too much on some of these discs, so it's good to hear him uh, kind of reflect on it. The um, Robot Monster trailer, and uh, Larry Blemeyer geeks out. Now, uh, Larry Blemeyer is the director, writer, and star of The Lost Skeleton of Cadaver, as well as its uh, sequel. Uh, Lost Skeleton Returns, and uh, Dark and Stormy Night as well. Uh, that guy is hilarious, and he also, in his own way, has been sort of doing MST3K in a way where he's been making fun of old B-movies himself by making new versions of B-movies and kind of like poking fun at the same time, you know, kind of celebrating them as well. And, man, he fits right in with this crew. Uh, he has a... Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a regular feature great. Uh, it, it's uh, from the people who do Ballyhoo uh, productions, and they've been doing a lot of features on uh, the MST3K discs. Uh, he discusses in great detail about the Robot Monster, 
And, you know, it's, it's partly joking around and partly very real, uh, discussing and breaking down uh, points in the movie. One of my favorite bits is how he talks about the robot monster was a different actor in the suit than he was, than they did, uh, than they got as a um, voiceover. And it didn't seem like the voiceover guy even had seen the footage. So he's doing a very monotone, calm uh, performance while the guy in the suit is just, just doing this. And he had a very, it, it's very funny where he talks about that and maybe he, he should do that in his own life, uh, just violently gesture while just talking normally. Uh, hey, you might want to try it at home. It's funny. Uh, very ex excellent. Now, let's move on to Bride of the Monster. Yeah, this has a couple of iconic classic bad movies. This is Bride of the Monster from Ed Wood. And yes, this is the same Bride of the Monster movie from the Tim Burton Ed Wood, where... Um, I think basically the bulk of the middle deals with the uh, making of this film. Uh, so, hey, you haven't seen it? Here it is. And it's made fun of. Now, it has, uh, of course, Bela Lugosi in his last full performance. And uh, Tor Johnson uh, as well. Now, one of the cool things about this is it has a, uh, another Ballyhoo documentary called Citizen Wood, uh, Making the Bride. Uh, unmaking the legend. And uh, it not only features uh, Larry Blamire. Uh, and Joel talking about the movie, but also George and Animal Steel, who played uh, Tor Johnson in uh, the Ed Wood film. They discuss uh, the film. What's interesting is they discuss uh, real life versus the Tim Burton film. Now, the thing is, uh, you may expect a whole bunch of Tim Burton references in this one, but this episode was made a year or two before the Tim Burton film came out, so sadly they didn't get a chance to do that. Although there's an odd Johnny Depp reference in there that just coincidentally uh, happens. Now, uh, it's really uh, educational, actually. Uh, also, there's a, a bit about the Invention Exchange, which is a uh, running joke that uh, went through the Joel years. And uh, they break that down. Also, there's the Bride of the Monster trailer. And, of course, the jokes in here are fantastic. There's also uh, the first of the Hired uh, short... Uh, now, Hired was broken up into two episodes because it was too long. So they did Hired Part 1 in this one and Hired Part 2 in Manos. So if you have Manos on uh, DVD already, you can finally have the whole set. This this is worth the whole set right here. This is five ramp chips all by itself. Now, we go to uh, Devil Doll, which is actually probably one of the better movies they ever made uh, that uh, made it onto the show. This is a... A uh, very dry British thriller about a, uh, uh, he's a hypnotist and a ventriloquist, and he's obviously very evil, uh, except to the people in the movie. They don't see that this guy is, you know, the devil incarnate. Uh, but not really the devil, it's just the title. But this guy is super creepy evil. Now, he doesn't have one second where he's charming. Uh, he can't compliment anybody without being evil about it. Uh, by the way, he's played by uh, Brian Holiday, who's actually, I think, a pretty good actor, actually. He he really does soak it up and go nuts. It, it's just the script didn't give him one second to, I don't know, be a little normal. Uh, like, Gro Gross says, can you just lighten up for ten seconds? Uh, anyway, he sucked the soul out of a dude and put him into a ventriloquist dummy and, I don't know, to be a slave. I'm not sure why he did that. And it's so funny because the, uh, the act is horrible. His act is just terrible. I mean, he kills people for this act, and it, he just gets on stage, and he argues with his puppet, and it's very uncomfortable. It's like, it's like being around a couple that should be divorced, and you just wanna, you don't want to be there anymore. It's funny for a second, and then, oh, boy, they're... Well, I just gotta get going. Um... The jokes are hilarious uh, about his, his bad act. Uh, also, uh, let's see, the uh, talking to uh, one of the producers, Richard Gordon, uh, on uh, what uh, how this film got to, to be made. Very interesting. Uh, also, Devilfish, which is a dumb Jaws ripoff from the 80s. It was uh, made by an Italian studio, shot in Florida, uh, so you can see it fairly dubbed here and there. It's crummy. It's like a typical ch shitty Jaws re uh, not re remake, uh, like a ripoff. Uh, it's a 
It's an octopus shark hybrid. Ah, oh, yeah, that's right. Whoever, the scientists in this movie were just thinking, like, ooh, we're smart. Let's make the most horrible thing ever. I mean, I mean, it's like, uh, it's like the sci-fi channel, you know, TV movies, except without the bad CG. Um, and, uh, let's see, this is a sci-fi episode as well. And the, the jokes are really terrific. There's a lot of jokes about this one character who drinks a lot. I mean, all the jokes about him are great. There's a wonderful Star Trek IV reference, and that's used twice in the host segments. Love it. Uh, I never see Star Trek IV made fun of, so here. Now, uh, the bonus features are the MST3K Origins and Beyond at Convergence 2009. Now, that's great. It's got uh, Mary Jo Peel, Joel, and Frank. Frank is hilarious in interviews. Holy crap. He's the funniest of the three uh, talking around. And it's uh, just a sci-fi con. I think it's in Minneapolis, right? Let's just say that. It seems like they're in Minneapolis. And uh, that goes on for about an hour. That's great. And they talk about the origins of the show. If you're a big MST3K fan, you've already heard it. But, you know, who cares? They're just fun to listen to. Now, also, there's the Devilfish trailer. There's a trailer on all uh, four of these. For some odd reason, the trailer is seen through the Hexacryl uh, view screen. So it's really tiny on screen, which isn't that. I, I don't know why they did that. Uh, it's a l little harder to watch. Uh, also, I should say one more thing about the menus. The menus have gotten really sophisticated over the last uh, few uh, Shout Factory uh, discs. They've been doing little kind of CG cartoon versions with uh, uh, Tom and Crow and Gypsy uh, reenacting scenes from uh, the movies and using actual dialogue from the riffs and sort of putting together new scenes. It's very funny, and this is some of the best ones they've done. Uh, Bride of the Monster is definitely worth the reason you should get it, but all of these are great. There's not one problem with this uh, set. This is easily probably the best set I've seen from either Rhino or Shout Factory. I'm giving this an easy five RAM chips. If you want to jump on to MST3K, uh, this is the disc to get. This this is the box set to get. Uh, I would obviously start with Bride of the Monster, and then maybe Devil Doll, Devil Fish, and do Robot Monster afterwards. Uh, Excellent set. Push the button, let's see.